Oh hey, welcome to my home for the holidays. So I'm really excited about today's video because I am going to be in my usual fashion dumping a ton of different DIYs on you. We're gonna be decorating and preparing my home for the holidays. Now this is gonna be the first part in a two part series. So part one is gonna be focusing predominantly on my dining room, which is the room that I'm in right now, and a little bit in the kitchen. And my next video, we're gonna be setting up the main Christmas tree in my living room. Regardless, if you are into DIY, if you're into nature and dark cottage core, Yule aesthetics, all that, this is gonna be the video for you. I hope you enjoy it, so I'm not gonna ramble any longer. Let's jump right into beautifying my home. So anyone who's watching any of my videos before knows that I have this toxic trait where I have the need to DIY and make everything that I can from scratch if, if it's possible. So before I even start decorating, I'm already thinking about things I need to prep beforehand. I wanted to use some doilies, so I crocheted up a doily. I got my prints all sorted out and I didn't really like how they had a gloss look to them, so I added a little bit of matte Mod Podge and I am blocking my doily just so that it is nice and ready to go for when I start to actually decorate my kitchen. I also went out into my lovely forest and found these really awesome branches, some uh, white cedar and pine and all sorts of things that I could find. I'm soaking them for about 24 hours in some water just to, you know, help the longevity of all these items as much as possible. Now while that's all happening, I wanted to do a little bit of sewing for some of the things I wanted in the kitchen. I'm not going to be doing anything drastically different in my kitchen from what I did for my fall and Halloween decorating. I just kind of want to update it for the season. So I'm replacing all the fabric, the curtains, my little curtain that was covering my trash cans. So that's what I am doing now. For the kitchen, I wanted to stick to predominantly all greens. Green is one of my favorite colors. I can never decide on just one. And I love the idea of just bringing nature into my home. So I wanted to use many different tones of greens, some deeper greens, obviously, but also some lighter, more sagey tones. I also decided to switch up the look of the curtains this time. did a slightly different style than before. And I added this little, not sure what it's called, but along the top so that it wouldn't look so empty in the middle. I also sewed up these little placemats, if you will, that I'm going to be using as a base for these little shelves. I found this really sweet little recipe box that was vintage from the 70s, along with these really awesome trivets that were hand carved uh, in India. They're all vintage. I have a bit of a hierarchy of how I go about accumulating the things I use for decorating. I start off with things that I already own and have. I DIY things. If I can't make it, if I can't find some sort of weird use for things I already have around the home, then I like to thrift and try to get things secondhand. I also ransacked my apothecary and found all these nice spices that I thought would also make some really cool decorations. So I'm using some anise and it really made the kitchen smell absolutely amazing. Now with the leftover fabric that I had for making those little placemats, I again don't like to put anything to waste. I'm the person who's hoarding jars and fabric and all that stuff, I don't throw it away because I know I'll find a use for it at some point. I thought I might as well use the rest of the fabric to make a really cute apron so I can match with my decor because why not? I basically just cut out a rectangle, curved the edges. I hemmed my little ruffle because I wanted to ruffle at the bottom and sewed a basting stitch so that I can gather it a little bit and then sandwich it between my two large rectangular pieces. I then created the waistband and then just folded that in on itself and sewed along the top, stitch in the ditch, and it came together pretty quickly and pretty nicely. As you'll note, there are quite a few things that I actually kept up from my last decorating video for fall and Halloween, one of them being the oranges, and I wanted to just add even more because you can never have enough. And it was very appropriate because way back in the day, these oranges were kind of a sign of the sun coming back, this being the darkest time of the year. It's also, I don't know, I just love the way it looks, even though it's a very traditional decoration that's nothing new. 
with some of the greenery that I had gotten from the woods, I wanted to just have clumps of it just everywhere on the cabinets, on the windows, and I was just crafting and just having fun. I used some of the dried oranges, I used some of the spices, I ended up poking some of the cloves through the oranges. I used some twine to wrap cinnamon sticks on some of the oranges. I was just doing whatever I felt like and again the smells were amazing. I loved how it looked visually. I forgot to get a close-up but one of the best things that I bought were these thumbtacks that are actually wood so they blend in so perfectly with my entire house my entire house is wood so little tip is find thumbtacks that match whatever color of whatever room that you're using because they're really easy to remove now I know that we all know that we can make an awesome simmer pot with the leftover sprigs and orange slices and all those things that we use for decorating around this time of year another thing that you can do is make your own multi-purpose spray just throw them all in a jar with a little bit of vinegar and let it sit for a couple weeks and it smells good it works for just a general no fuss cleaner. Now because I have an apron and my kitchen is looking very nice, I I had to do a little bit of baking and so I wanted to leave this little clip in. I made this star bread and I used some cherry jam. And if you too are a fan of baking, particularly if you are interested in vegan baked goods, stick around because later on this month I am going to be doing some fun baking and decorating. excited because when I was visiting my parents I was able to go to the park with my mom and we found a ton of acorns pine cones beautiful things for me to make decorations with I think that foraging for your own stuff it's fun to do for one for two it's cheap because it's free now obviously follow like basic foraging guidelines where you make sure that you leave more than enough of what you take out there and a couple of things that you can do also when you are foraging things is that you know there might be bugs and little critters so you can actually put things into the oven at a very very low temperature I think around 200 degrees kind of kills off you know moisture and all that kind of stuff I had a lot of stuff here I also live in the woods I'm kind of used to having <laughs> critters around so I didn't do it with quite everything because I thought that my propane bill would be through the roof if I were to bake every single thing I have here Anyway, we're going to continue on and start to make a pine cone garland. I'm just taking a piece of twine. I measured the area that I wanted it to be in. I'm making sure that there is excess twine. And then you just wrap little pieces of twine around each pine cone and then tie that to your original string. While I'm also putting up the garland, I'm making sure since things are shifting a little bit, if there's any gaps, I can add more pine cones in as needed. Out in my yard, I was also able to find these branches that are a little bit on the thinner side and really easy to bend into a wreath. So for this, I know that sometimes you can soak these if they are a little bit stiffer or I think if you use branches pretty quickly after you collect them from nature, since there's a lot of water still in it, they're pretty easy to bend and shape. So I just use twine to manipulate everything into a circle. I use the stronger branches first as a better base and then started layering on top of that. Now I'm taking a short break from the wreath to work on these acorns. 
So I took a little bit of brass paint. I actually just mixed gold and brown and I did a really light wash on all these acorns. I wanted them to have a little more glamour. And I'm also gonna be using bronze as a very predominant color in the other part of my house. So I kind of wanted to have a, a slight unifying element. I was also left over with a bunch more caps than I actually had of acorns. So with the caps, I ended up just using some of the extra branches that I have that were way too thick to be used and making little mushrooms and I am going to be using these as ornaments for the tree. Now I already pre-drilled holes into each of these caps and if you take the piece of twine and put a little bit of hot glue, wait for it to cool just slightly so you're not going to burn yourself, you can twist the end so it's really easy to thread through the hole of the cap. Now I'm just using some more hot glue and I stick either the stick to make the little mushrooms or my acorn and I'm going to make quite a few ornament versions of these but I'm also going to be using some with just one long string so I can attach it to my wreath. I don't want to have this wreath entirely covered with greenery I just wanted to focus more on the bottom because my idea is that I want to have stag horns mounted in the middle and I want that to be more of the focal point and not the greenery to deter from that so I'm focusing everything in the bottom I use some twine to again bunch together some pine cones and I use a little bit of the greenery wire to thread through the wreath and secure them now I actually decided because I had plenty of pine cones left over to make a second wreath that I'm going to be adding here to the reading nook. I know that I'm holding the hammer really weird here, but it was an odd angle so I just had to make do. I also want to add a bit more greenery to the top of my apothecary door, so there's this nice little pocket door in my dining room that leads into my office, apothecary, sewing room, whatever, and I wanted to mount this on top. Now I had all of these tiny, tiny little acorns and I was trying to think of what I wanted to do with them and I thought that making these like acorn balls would be perfect. So I'm actually using tennis balls here. I, I poked holes in with tweezers, I filled them with glue, took a little bit of that green rewire, made a hook. I wanted to stick a, I don't know, like half an inch above the ball because these acorns are obviously have some height to them and I want to be able to thread ribbon through it later. So with my glue gun, I am just attaching all these tiny little acorns with the bottom, the flat side down, if that makes sense. Obviously you can see a bunch of the green stuff, so I'm doing layers here. I'm filling in the gaps with more acorns, caps, and then any tiny, tiny little gaps, I thought I'd just use some more cloves. Smells good, looks good, it works. Now this next DIY is not my own idea. I'm gonna be adding the blog that I actually found this on so you all can reference all the details, but I saw this idea of making vintage style bells out of soda cans or seltzer water cans in this case. You cut it with an X-Acto knife quite easily, you bang it up to make it look very old, and you gotta be really careful, you know, be safe, hold in all the sharp edges so that nothing bad happens. Obviously where I live is way too cold for me to spray paint outside, so I just used some black paint and a paintbrush, it takes a little bit more time but it works. And then I just used a old rag and some spray paint to blot over top. And now I'm gonna jump into making my stag horns. I'm using a little bit of wire to create a frame first so I have something to attach my clay to. I am using aluminum foil for the bulk because this would have to be in the oven for an eternity if I just made this straight out of clay all the way through. And I'm using some polymer clay for this. I The polymer clay I've been using for my other projects was a horrible polymer clay. I don't remember what it was, but it was really hard. So this was a delight to work with. I, I don't think this project would have happened if I was using my old clay. So whichever this white one is, this one's a good one. This one's nice and soft and easy to manipulate. I rolled out these pieces of the clay into even strips and then I'm adding them in and I spent a lot of time just smoothing things out the best I could.
Now, at the base of these horns, there's a little bit of like this lip. So I rolled out a little bit of clay and I am slowly just blending that in with the rest of the horns. I'm also using some of my newly bought tools to add a little bit of texturing. I want this to be kind of realistic. I also want it to look pretty jagged because there's usually not just a clean cut where the skull cap is. I want it to, you know, be jagged a little bit more realistic, add a little bit of cracking. Now, one thing that I have to say, make sure that the size of your horns does not exceed the size of your oven because I had not thought about that and it barely fit. I had a little bit of singeing, but I'm gonna paint over it and it shouldn't really be a big deal. I'm using some of the other bones I already own that are real bones as a reference for the coloring so I can kind of make sure that the actual color is as close to accurate as possible. I wanted this to look as much like an actual bone as possible and you know I'm, I was really in the zone with this and I didn't realize that the antlers go a lot higher upwards so I, I basically just invented a new animal here which is fine with me. This could be a very fantasy woodland themed anyway so it kind of works. I'm also using some other darker colors to add some shading, more dimension to the bones. Now I had this idea with some of the branches that I had grabbed from the yard that I wanted to do this archway, something that wasn't too intrusive of the space since I, you know, none of the rooms in my house are very big and I didn't want to do anything too crazy and I thought that a nice little archway with a bunch of fairy lights would look really pretty. I am lucky because my whole house is made out of wood, it's pretty easy to just nail things in. So I just nailed in these branches. I went out into the front yard and I chopped down this sweet little tree, which I think is like the perfect look for what I was going for in this room. Very simple, very just charming. And I hung my little ornaments that I made. Now the very last thing I'm going to do is make this runner. I originally wanted to make a tablecloth, but the fabric kind of shrunk in the wash and they cut it incredibly crooked when I ordered this bit of fabric, so I had to just. I did a really big extravagant dining setting for my last video and I definitely didn't want to do that again because we only have one table in the house and I use it a lot so I wanted something that was very practical for our lifestyle. Now the reveal is coming in just a few moments. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a like and don't forget to subscribe if you are interested in catching part two. Until then have a wonderful day or night. Bye!